Hello and welcome to the Decision Wise Engaging People podcast. My name is Charles Rogel. I'm a senior consultant here at Decision Wise. I'll be moderating today's discussion and today we have with us Dave Long. Hello, nice to be here. Dave is our Vice President of Assessment Services, also uh, works as a senior consultant uh, here at DecisionWise, and the topic we're going to discuss today is developing others. Now to kind of set this up, um, we assess this on our employee engagement surveys quite frequently in a couple different ways. One of the main questions that we ask employees is uh, the statement here, I feel challenged and stretched in my job in a way that results in personal growth. Um, we also measured this topic um, in a couple other factors. So we measure at the team level, the supervisor level. So we want to find out if the manager um, is actively involved in supporting uh, my growth as a, an employee. And then at the organization level, if there's um, opportunities for development or good opportunities for development and also advancement in the organization. So as we measure that, we find varying degrees of results um, and various interpretations of what development means in organizations. So Dave, I was going to have you kind of set this up by describing what we're talking about here. Sure. And this is something that I think comes up pretty commonly when I'm working with with organizations on uh, on engagement mm -hmm. is is this idea of how do we grow or develop our employees, and it's an important topic because it's one of those things that we've found uh, that leads directly to engagement. And very mm -hmm. often when we when we run a survey with an organization, we will we will uh, look for what's driving engagement within that organization, and if we look at our, our overall results um, across many different organizations, it's pretty overwhelmingly in favor of we need to grow our people in order to retain them and also in order to engage them. Right, yeah. Um, and so it's such an important topic, and yet uh, there's so many organizations that, that struggle with this particular thing, uh, developing their people, helping people feel like they're having opportunities to make personal, professional progress and feel challenged and stretched in their work. So what are the common challenges that organizations face when they're trying to develop people? Yeah, it's interesting. You mentioned there's a few different ways that we measure uh, whether or not people feel like they're being challenged and stretched in their jobs or whether or not they're growing. Mm -hmm. And I think the way that an organization will typically see this when they get their results back on the survey and they say, oh, this we've got a problem with development or growth with our people, is the first thing that they'll go to is, well, you know, there really aren't any we're not prepared to promote a whole bunch of people because this is an issue. There's only op so many open spots. There's only so many open spots, exactly. Yeah. We're not growing very fast. We're kind of small. Yeah. yeah, and I think that's the way that people lean uh, People lean toward thinking, well, what are the promotion opportunities that we have? Is there a better way to align people to those, uh, those opportunities? Is there a way for us to let them know? Mm -hmm. uh, th those promotion opportunities are, are great, and people, I mean, I think they can create – motivation in people leading up to pro to a promotion or even right after yeah there's a lot of challenge and stretch that you have when you take on a new job mm -hmm. um, but there are things that they're they're more events than they are anything else so we'd put them more into rather than something that drives engagement we'd call it more of a satisfaction factor right something that 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 you know if there are it's one of those things you might leave an organization for because because, if, but it doesn't engage you on a day to day basis just because there are promotion opportunities. Sure, sure. And it uh, might be, um, it might motivate you for a moment, but it kind of dies off after you've yeah. been in the position a while. Because, like, you've been in the position for three weeks, and what are you thinking about? Mm -hmm. What's the next promotion? Sure. <laughs> <Is there Right. laughs> how am I going to get promoted again? Uh -huh. So, Dang uh, millennials. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Well, millennials, it's, it's everybody, really, right? <laughs> yeah. So, um, so we, we want to think about growth. And we want to divorce that from whether or not we have provo promotion opportunities in the organization. And how do we help people advance and feel like they're being challenged and stretched on a daily basis without always making it about whether or not yeah. there's a promotion opportunity? And in fact, uh, with with most of the organizations that we work with, and Charles, I know you've seen this too, mm -hmm. They're, they're not really getting deeper in terms of org structure. They're not adding layers of management. Some right. of them that are growing quickly might be doing that. But most organizations are becoming more flat rather than more deep. And so right. you, have, you have fewer layers of management and, and more managers sort of at this really big middle level. And so most organizations, I would say, are not trying to add many levels of middle management, which would be the traditional, that's the promotion I want is to get into some sort of management or leadership role. Sure. And so they have to find ways to help people feel like they're progressing 
even when there's not a promotion opportunity to dangle in front of everybody. Yep. Um, and so w- oftentimes when, when I'm working with organizations, what I've found, and, and, and specifically with managers and organizations, is that, that managers will tend to shy away from those conversations, those growth conversations, when they don't have an immediate opportunity, pr- opportunity yeah. right in front of them, right? Uh-huh. Like, I don't want to set an expectation, yeah, get them all excited for nothing. Exactly. And if I open the dialogue, how long is that dialogue going to go on and how, yeah. how much will I have to say? Sure. About it. Mm-hmm. And so there's a little bit of a shying away from that. And the conversations with a lot of frontline managers turn more tactical. Uh-huh. Um, how do we grow in your position right now? Or how do I get you to do the things? Perform better. Perform yeah. better, exactly. Yeah. You learn more about your current role. Uh-huh. And that's an important part of management. But there's also, I think, you know, when, when managers pay more attention to the whole person of where you want to go and what are your ambitions and your hopes and your dreams, Mm -hmm. it becomes a more, it becomes a richer kind of experience for the employee. Yeah. Yeah. Um, One of the things that we've, and and I've done this with a couple, two or three organizations where um, part of our survey, we'll have all the traditional questions that we ask, but part of the survey, we asked them, when was the last time you had a conversation with your manager about your own personal growth and development. <laughs> Never. And so we do this, with, we, we kind of cross tab this with whether or not they're engaged. Sure. So the ones that are saying, oh, I had a conversation in the last month, mm-hmm. super engaged. Hmm. Um, last three months, still pretty engaged. Yeah. Last six months, uh, they're starting to get kind of toward the average of what we normally see. Okay. In the last year, now they're starting to get disengaged. If they've never had a conversation with their manager about their growth and development, all of a sudden it's like super disengaged population the of people. Part of it, yeah. Now, um, now, the, the, I mean, there may be a lot of reasons for that, right? Uh-huh. You, you're disengaged people. You're not really giving growth conversations. It could cause either way. Sure. I'm not saying yeah. causation either way, but there's something to that, right? Mm-hmm. If I feel like I I have a manager that's actively invested in my development and my future, then I I feel better about my prospects with that organization. And I feel cared for mm-hmm. by that manager. And they, they feel like that manager has looking out for me. Yeah. Looking out for me and my future. Exactly. So, um, so I've, I've suggested and, and have done this with organizations, but also have written about it in our blog, uh-huh. um, you know, conversations that, that managers should be having with their employees in order to kind of spark that this is the way, a way to spark the conversation between managers, and employees, and just really quickly, some, some ideas for yeah, that. Definitely. Like if, if your organization is struggling with this, equip your managers with a dialogue or a narrative that they can go back to their employees with that can kind of, you know, yeah, be some structure they can use in their conversation. Exactly. So number one, if, if, if managers haven't had a conversation about, the ambitions of their employees, like their direct employees. What do you want to do with your life? How do you want to grow? What do you What do you want to be when you grow up? Right, that kind of conversation. Uh-huh. They should probably do that immediately. I should, I should do that sometime too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Charles, what do you want to do? <laughs> right. uh, what do you want to be when you grow up? But that's something that 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 uh, that a manager. Every manager should have a handle on what. So what? What's the end goal for mm-hmm. each of their employees? Um, you know, have a handle on that, understand it. Cause without that conversation, that upfront due diligence of what does this person want to do? It's hard for them to know how to stretch them in a way that is meaningful to them. Right. Right. So now I know, oh, okay. I, I know that Charles, you know, wants to be, you know, a, a, a radio voice someday. Well, I can, <laughs> <laughs> I can put him on, on the decision wise podcast or, or something sure. like that, whatever right, right. it might be. Right. Um, a, a, a follow-up conversation to that ambition would be uh, that that what are your career ambitions conversation would be uh, let's start setting some goals mm-hmm. let's see what we can do here in order to help you fire up uh, fire up your future and, and get you learning those things that you need to learn stretching in those areas where you need to stretch yep. in order to do that and then we can start saying <laughs> like okay so what are the opportunities that exist on our team I call it opportunity alignment what are the opportunities that exist on our team that maybe that somebody else is doing that might align with your path? Mm-hmm. And I can, I can put you on those opportunities because we, we have a whole bunch of tasks we need to accomplish as a team, and I can a- align the right people to the people who find them interesting. Okay. Um, 
uh, but but also there's oftentimes when you have an employee who who maybe doesn't feel like they're growing in an area that's interesting to them, if you understand what their ambitions are or what they want to do with their career, you can say, hey, listen, I know this is hard. What you're doing, the stretching that you're going through right now is tough. Mm -hmm. This is how I think it fits into your future. Hey, you want to go on to become X, Y, or Z. Well, this is how the work that you're doing now that's really hard, the stretching that you're going through, is going to help you accomplish that goal. That's a real conversation you can have. That's a, what we call a framing conversation. Yeah. Allowing uh, something we wrote about in the Engagement Magic book that we have. But, but it's a framing conversation to let them know, hey, yeah, I know this is tough right now, but think about what, what it's doing for you in your future and the, and the goals that you have. And the last one is, and, and as I think about this and I think about you know, uh, organizations where they're struggling with growth, a lot of, growth is kind of on a continuum because – at one end of this continuum, you have you have people that aren't growing enough or don't have enough daily challenge, and they're bored. Yeah, they're like you know they're doing the same repetitive task every day. They're bored. Um, and then on the other end of the spectrum, you have somebody who's really in the in the fire, mm-hmm. and they are burned out. Yeah, right? like they they've got too much to do or too, too much, much to think plate. about. They're growing too much. Uh-huh. So there's a balance that a manager has to work with their team walk with their team where they say we don't want people that are bored and we don't want people that are burned out but there's a space between burn burnout and boredom sure where engagement can occur uh-huh. and so just doing a check-in uh, conversation and say hey we i know you're going through a hard time what can we do to support you with resources or with training in order to make sure that we get you back into that engagement yeah because if you're way too busy the opportunity mm-hmm. to kind of take on more mm-hmm. learn more is just like the, it's too you much know, you too, gotta have that temperature yeah. check and make sure Okay. Make sure. Um, that, that's one of the things that I think we've talked with organizations about is, is just, you know, let's make sure and, and on a very personal level with employees. And when we're thinking about developing employees, the, most organizations would tell you, well, our organizations, our, our employees in our organization need to own their own careers. Mm-hmm. And I think that's really good advice for anybody, right? Yeah. Like if you want to develop or if you want to grow, really take ownership of your own path, of your own career. But we'd be kidding ourselves if we said a person's direct manager isn't directly involved sure. in that person's path. And yeah. so um, what can an organization do if they feel like they don't have promotion opportunities? Involve the managers more. Equip them with the conversations that they need to have with their employees in order to make them feel like they're, they're advancing or growing. Um, another, another issue that I've seen, Charles, with, with, uh, with uh, organizations is that they have people – that they could advance or they could promote, but they're so darn good at their jobs. Yeah, you it's don't want to. hard to. I don't want to mess that up, right? right? I don't want to mess. <laughs> it, don't want to rock the boat here. Yeah. And and people can be hard to replace, you uh-huh. know, especially if you have a highly skilled position. It can be hard to replace that person. It can be expensive to replace that Definitely. person. Well, in fact, I, I've seen organizations. Uh, one example a client I work with who had some real uh, uh, good people in their positions who were. Uh, looking to leave the organization, so they promoted them. They gave them like, <laughs> and, they, and they promoted them out of out of season, basically. So they normally had a, a right. normal pr- uh, date when they did these, and that created a lot of disruption in the in the company because they're like, why did these few people get promoted? You know, I thought right. this was at the end of the year that <laughs> right. we did this, and well, they were going to leave. You know, so anyway, so they um, they kind of stepped on their feet a little bit, um, trying to save this, you know, these valuable right. individuals, and, and created another mess. <laughs> right. Well, and, and I think it's hard, too, because those valuable individuals are valuable for what they're doing now and their position now. Uh-huh. And to keep them and to try to promote them, I mean, they're, they'd be valuable in other positions as well. And so many, so many people, once they've kind of learned a job, they're looking for what is the next challenge. Yeah. And it might not be a direct promotion. It could be lateral. Mm-hmm. And, and I think um, one of the things that I've, I've been thinking about lately or, or kind of observing lately is that it, when it is not convenient to give people those opportunities, sometimes organizations will shy away from it. And organ, there has to be to really fire up development and growth and really make people feel good about their futures in, the organ, in your organization. You have to be disciplined to take people who where sometimes it hurts to move them out of position and give them learning opportunities or even to send them to a training. Yeah. You have to be disciplined to do it. Yeah. Like you have to show. And then when you're disciplined to do it, then you're showing everybody else around them, Hey, this company is willing 
to take take a mission critical person and stop everything and give them a growth opportunity, give yep. them something, some way to develop them further. Which then opens up a position for someone else, and hopefully you're building that. Right, a- absolutely. Well. And then somebody fills that position, and mm-hmm. and you hopefully get a, a virtuous um, cycle of people going through the organization and growing, and improving. Uh, but those are those are kind of the the main things I was thinking about. You know, with regard to challenge and stretch, um, and, and just helping people feel like they're growing on a day to day basis. That's the most important thing when we're talking about engagement. Do people feel like they're advancing on a day to day basis? It's not about promotions, although we love promotions. Everybody loves promotions. Most people are just trying to make more money yeah. with those promotions, and it's totally understandable. If we're really trying to work on engagement, we're really trying to improve the daily conversations and the daily check ins with our employees to make sure that they are challenged, that, they're, that the, in, the work in front of them is still interesting to them that they're still learning from it. That's great. Thanks, Dave. Yeah, this gives me a lot of good ideas in terms of how to frame the conversation with my 15-year-old about his <laughs> online gaming career. No, that's good. He's going to get thousands of followers well, watching him game. we can learn game. a lot about growth from gaming, <laughs> right? that's for sure. They, yeah. they, they... Uh, no, perfect. Well, great. Dave, thank you very much. Um, just to wrap up, I want to promote uh, an upcoming training that we're also conducting here at DecisionWise. Um, that's kind of in line with this topic as well, developing people. Uh, as most of you probably know, we conduct 360-degree feedback assessments. Uh, we also train people on how to coach and debrief those results. And so uh, to support that process, we are conducting a 360 feedback coaching certification training um, coming up September 25th to the 26th. That's uh, 2019 in case this podcast been, has been out for a few years. Um, and that'll be at the DecisionWise headquarters here in Springville, Utah. You can find more information on our website, um, but it's a great course. It's um, conducted by one of our expert 360 coaches here at DecisionWise. Uh, two-day course, you learn everything and everything about coaching and debriefing 360s and just general coaching uh, overall. So thanks, everyone, for joining us. Thanks, Dave, for your uh, great uh, feedback and input. You bet. And we hope that uh, everyone joins us on our next podcast. Thanks, everybody. 